Hey guys, welcome back to Camo Drizzle TV. Today will be quite a different video than what I usually do. I want to like test my waters, try some new stuff. If you don't like it, tell me. If you like it, like the video. I'm expecting this video to get like 10 views, but you know what? Let's take a risk. Um, I'm not a comic book channel. I just want to let you guys know, but anyways. So there's no doubt that religion in Nigeria is a big deal. In fact, Nigeria has the highest amount of Muslims and Christians in Africa and it's also within the top 10 in the world for both of these categories. But what many people don't know is that before these Abrahamic beliefs were introduced, Nigeria was split up into hundreds of tribes who had their own beliefs. One of the most well known is the ancient Yoruba religion and their pantheon, the Orishas. This belief is also the basis for a number of other religions, notably Haitian voodoo, Umbanda and Sanitaria. But who are they? Well, stay tuned to this episode of Camel Jizzle TV to find out. This is The Orishas Explained. Just a disclaimer for you aunties and uncles that have your nose pointed up. This video is for educational purposes only. This isn't me promoting or not promoting anything. I'm simply just talking about something that my ancestors followed. And if you're of Caribbean, African American or South American descent, this may have been the religion your ancestors followed too. The Yoruba tribe is probably the most influential African tribe in history. If you want a video about them alone, just drop a like. Because if you didn't know, I am, you know, I'm Nigerian. So what are the Orishas? The Orishas are a group of supernatural beings or spirits and they act as the mediators between the human and spiritual realm. They were first worshipped in the ancient Yoruba land, which spans parts of modern day Nigeria, Togo and Benin. The Yoruba land was essentially a massive country until colonization. The Orishas are very complex beings and although they represent the divine, they also possess human-like qualities. In many stories, they are portrayed as not being so perfect. This helps the followers to learn and relate to them. They are all governed by the Supreme God, or Lorun. I do want to make things clear. The Orishas are not gods. They are divine spirits. Their counterparts would be the angels in Abrahamic religions or the many saints in Catholicism. For this video, I'll be referring to their ancient Yoruba versions because that will be the easiest to explain and it's the basis for all the other variants of this belief. And lastly, although I am of Yoruba descent, as you can tell from my voice, I am British. I was born and brought up in the UK, so this is my natural accent. So I may pronounce things wrong, but it is what it is. Okay, so number one, Eshu Ilebara. Eshu is known as the messenger between worlds and is the guardian of the crossroads. He is known as the trickster out of the Orishas and he guides the dead to the next life. Eshu is also the Orisha you call upon if you would like to communicate with the other Orishas. So he is essentially the mediator between humans and the divine. He is associated with the colors black and red. Number two, Ogun. Ogun is the spirit of ironwork and he rules over everything metal, as well as alchemy, weapons, orphans, and the homeless. He is also known to have healing abilities because of his close ties to blood, and he is also known as the Great Destroyer. He is known as one of the most paternal spirits because he looks after and watches over children and families. He is associated with the colors, green, red, white, black, and blue. Ogun is definitely one of the more popular spirits. He was even the inspiration behind Ogun from the manga and anime series, Fire Force. You can tell that Otsushi Okubo did his research because in the anime, Ogun has the ability to summon and create weapons out of fire. He is also one of the best representations of black people in anime ever. So watch it now. Well, after my video, you know, watch it. Fire Force, okay, it's on Funimation. Free. Obatala. Obatala is the Orisha of healing, creation and peace. He is tasked with the job of creating humans. He is known as one of the kinder spirits and is credited for the creation of the first Yoruba city, Ife, in Nigeria. In other beliefs, he is directly linked to Jesus Christ. 
or Batala is one of the more revered Orishas. You can see large statues of him all over South America and West Africa. The colour he is closely associated with is white. 4. Yamaya Another popular Orisha and the first woman on this list, Yamaya is the spirit of the oceans and motherhood. She is primarily depicted as a mermaid. She rules over women and children and protects them from harm and neglection. Yamaya also tends to guide those that are travelling at sea. People often confuse Yamaya with Oshun and although they are similar, they are actually sisters. Yamaya is famously known to not get along with her fellow colleague, Oya. Her anger can typically be reflected through the sea. So you can say tsunamis are a result of her being very, very unhappy. She was famously adapted into a character in Smite. If you play that game, I don't know. Her colours are blue, white and pearl. Number 5, Oshun. The second female Orisha and the sister to Yamaya, Oshun is the spirit of the rivers. It's a common practice to baptise in water in order to be closer to her and to invoke her purifying essence. Some women even do cleansing rituals in the name of Oshun to help heal reproductive issues. Oshun rules over all things that flow, such as water, love, milk, honey and money. You can often find statues of her near rivers. It is said she taught the Yoruba people agriculture, culture and mysticism. Like her sister, she does not get along with Oya. There's an annual festival in Osun State, Nigeria that runs for 12 days to honour Oshun. This festival is believed to be at least 600 years old and it attracts many people nationwide. Her colours are yellow, gold and orange. 6. Shango Shango is a warrior and is known as the Lord of Thunder and Fire and he uses them to deliver justice against the forces of evil. He apparently uses them against Oshun, of whom he has a rivalry with. Shango is definitely the player of the group, and that's evident from his high profile relationships with Oshun and Oya. He is famous for his love of music, women, and having fun. Shango's colors are red and white. Number seven, Oya. Last but not least, we have Oya. She is essentially the female counterpart to Shango. She is the Orisha of winds, lightning, violent storms, death and rebirth. She is also known to the Yoruba as the mother of nine. Because of the nine children she gave birth to, all of them were stillborn, making her the eternal baroness. Oya rules over the river Niger and is said that she shaped it herself. Her character was loosely adapted into the superheroine Oya in Marvel Comics. Though in the comic she's actually Ebo, but I think they just didn't do their research. Her colours are maroon and all shades of purple. So these are the seven main Orishas. There are some more and sometimes they're swapped out for some of these, but the ones I spoke about seem to be the most popular and well known. So. Did you know about the Orishas before? Have you noticed any similarities with other ancient religions such as Greek, Hellenism? And would you like to see any other videos about African spirituality? Well, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you again for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for videos every Friday. Let me know how this lighting setup was. I know I left the back, you know, a bit more darker. Let me know how it is. Um, bye.